So this is part two of our video so far, and here are my some of my succulents that are outdoors. And I'm going to give you guys a closer look of the others that I didn't show you in the other video and give IDs. This right here is my cluster of Graptopetalum Superbum. I used to have the mother plants. I think, where's the mother plant? The mother plant is actually right down there. It's hiding. This is one of the mother plants. She is recovering and she is growing another baby somewhere in there as well. You can see it there on the side. And that is the stem propagations and some leaf propagations that I got from it as well. And look, there's a full pot. There's some purple delights that are mixed in there, but these here are all Graptopetalum superbugs. I think I told you guys this was a Echeveria Golden Glow in the other video. And then right down here, these are my... Uh, I forgot the IDs, but I will put it up on the screen for you. They kind of behave a lot like sedums for me as far as watering and the amount of sunlight that they get, but they are really easy once you figure them out. These guys hate growing indoors, guys. They like the humidity outdoors for some reason. This here is a Sedevaria pink granite that is starting to stress from, I guess, different temperatures in the day and at night. These are just small cuttings of Sula baby's necklace. I have full pots of them inside. This is a leaf propagation of Echeveria Renioni something. I forgot. And this is a leaf propagation of, I don't know, I still don't know what it is. It just kind of started growing there for me. I'm not sure which plant it was from. It was a mystery. And then this one here is my not stressed because it is been raining a lot and it's full of water. This is my Echeveria Dusty Rose right here. I've gotten a few babies from her and they've now found new homes but this is my main mother plant. And then here, I think you kind of saw her in the last video but I didn't introduce her. This is Echeveria Renioni Lucita. This is my pot of babies. I took these as stem cuttings from the mother plant which is actually right here. This was the mother plant and I showed her to you guys in the last video. Those are her babies that I transferred into another pot and they are now growing. So in a few months, they should be as big or bigger than the mother plant. And then I will give them separate pots after that. But look at how beautiful these guys are. And here, I have a bunch of babies of... I'm so sorry, I forgot what this is called, but it is that same one right there. A bunch of babies here. I had to take, see, it's been raining a lot and the mother plant kind of rotted. I did save the top part of it and I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna reroute the mother plant that all these babies came from, but these will be okay right out here. This here is a sedum donkey's tail. I have another pot indoors, but I want to see how they grow outdoors and so far they are growing outdoors a little better so I might take the mother pot out but these are just a bunch of cuttings and babies that I'm growing and they are growing nicely. These here are Chrysula. I'll put the name up on the screen for you because I forgot. Something Ivory Towers I think. Chrysula Ivory Towers if I'm correct and they didn't like being indoors either and now they're growing out nicely again out here. These here are a type of Kalanchoe. This used to be really full, but I just, I've been loving it so much that it's starting to look less and less full and I've taken cuttings. This here is Chrysula Rupestris Rosary Vine. And they're not liking the outdoors very much right now. So um, I'm gonna have another episode where I fix succulents that are kind of having problems and show you guys how to restart them but that is Chrysula Repestris Rosary Vine. Here is my really fast growing, actually. I started with a very small cutting of this. This is Dancing Bones, Hatioria, something like that. I will put the name up on the screen, but uh, I wanted to make it into a hanging plant and it kind of is trailing over now. Then here are some 
baby Graptivaria debbies that are growing. And in there are, you see these stems? These were my stems from uh, the beheading episode video that we did. Didn't want to throw them away. I just wanted to see what would happen if I planted them. And two of the stems actually completely dried out. But the other two ended up growing new purple delight babies. Look at, there's a baby there, there's a baby there, and right up there. There's some more along the stem in the back. And then right here, the other stem that survived, look, it's growing new super bumps again. So don't give up on bare stems, guys, even if they're just cuttings and they don't have roots. Plant them in soil and you never know what will happen. Here is a gift from one of our friends, Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. One of our, uh, this is a Portulacaria Afra. I have a hard time keeping them alive, but so far, this one is growing and doing really well for me. These guys like a lot of water, more than the other succulents that I have here. And they like morning sun. They don't like a lot of, they don't like too much heat, okay? Then here, I think this is called an Echeveria Fire and Ice. It struggled in the beginning as I was trying to figure out its conditions, but it's doing okay now, just in morning sun, about four hours. Not too much because for some reason the leaves were burning. I, I love and burning. then here I have a tray of Sedum Tokyo Sun. Uh, when I started with this, it was only like this much and it just kind of crawled all over. Um, I think it is mainly used as a ground cover, but that is Sedum Tokyo Sun. Right over here, I have another Graptivaria Douglas Hut. These were the main stems that I continually behead and then take off the babies and then behead again and propagate, but it does give a lot of babies. This here is a random pot of plants that I just put together. I think this is an Echeveria minima that I grew from leaf. These are agavoides that are not growing, and this is a Kalanchoe Lavender Scallops, Sedum Dasiphylum Major. I just need to water it more and then it will be okay. And then right here, this hanging plant here, this is called a string of pillows. It used to be a very full pot, but I kind of just kept cutting and now it's root bound and I do need to repot it. And here are my string of dolphins that are very dehydrated and in need of water but despite that, they are growing really quickly. Here is my string of hearts. This is just a mother plant that I keep propagating from. So I think I've given it too much sun, so the top is not looking too great right now. But I just always take cuttings from it and then grow new pots, grow new nice healthy pots. Here I have another succulent. It's a some sort of Echeveria. I honestly forgot what it is, but when I when I do figure it out, I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, this was a stem propagation. You can see I cut off the mother plant right there. And then these are two babies that came off of that stem. And then right down here, this is just a baby leaf propagation of Graptopetalum superbum. Look at how fat and chubby that little baby is. Here I have a random pot of sedums. I think these are sedum nos bomeranium. Grab the sedum California sunset here and that other one. I need to chop these off again so they can make more babies. These are stem propagations. You can see where I cut right there and then I think this was the top part of what that stem used to be. And there's the sedum nos bomeranium. It's really quick growers guys. I grew this from a single cutting. A cutting like this and then I kind of just kept cutting and chopping and sticking leaves into the pot and they just kept growing. Right down there is a Hawarthia fasciata zebra plant and it is doing really nicely in the shade. It loves its spot and it's just growing really nicely. And then over here I just have a pot of not stressed fire sticks and then a bunch of aloe cuttings that I got from my best friend from one of our succulent unboxings and as you can see my aloes are in bloom. Then here I have some, what are these, adeniums, right? Desert roses. Um, one is supposed to have a black and white flower and the other pink 
And uh, these actually grew from seed. They were given to me as seedlings about two weeks old and I've grown them since. This is a frizzle sizzle and the more sun you give it, the more curly it gets, but I'm not putting it in direct sun right now because it was struggling when I put it out there and then we've been having rains daily and I don't want it to get over watered because the bulb here that I'm pressing, I'm checking it's still full and it doesn't need any water right now. If it gets a lot of water, it does rot. The mother plant did rot. This is actually one of the babies that I saved. Priscilla Tom Thumbs, I am gonna take, I am gonna cut these off. I'm gonna do a video of saving my succulents that are struggling later on and share it with you guys, but this is one of the struggling ones. It doesn't seem to like it here outdoors, or maybe I'm just not watering it enough. I think I am going to transfer it into a plastic pot because I have noticed that Chrysula's like plastic pots. Look, that just came off because the stem is just so dry. And then here is, uh, I had to take this off because the stem was rotting and I wanted to make sure I saved it and plant it again as a cutting. As succulent owners, guys, you know, we're, we're all going to have to deal with rot one day. Just don't worry about it. Make sure you catch it on time. Cut it and plant it as a cutting and you will save the main plant. And then here I have an overgrown arrangement of aloe. She has since had about three or four babies since planting in here. Here is an Ech Echeveria subsessilis morning beauty. And this right here I think is an Echeveria lilacina that is just fine right there i think they do need more sun right up here i have my string of pearls that i'm growing outdoors i currently don't grow them outdoors anymore they like it better indoors by a window with a lot of morning light or under grow lights but so far these are growing but they're growing very slowly here is our graptocetum ghosty that we beheaded a few episodes ago this was actually a full plant already but i beheaded it so i can get more babies out of it and look at how much babies it has given me look at this one single stem how many babies it gave me there's so much babies there and then there's this one again i have a bunch of leaves that i stuck in there that are also growing these are growing on this stem i think and this stem despite drying out already replant the whole thing so the babies can continue growing and I want to save the stem because the stem will grow me a lot of babies and then right here I have some string of turtles this was only probably like a line like this a strip this only had a strip like down the middle when I bought it and it is now filling up sometimes you will see leaves like look at that brown one there it looks like it's rotting don't worry it will survive as long as you know that you haven't overwatered it these guys actually do like a lot of humidity and a lot of water i don't water it very often out here because i kind of just let nature take care of it but when the soil does get dry i do give it a full soak but there you go my beautiful string of turtles they're actually blooming these things right here these are actually its flowers this is a graptopetalum paraguayans ghost plant and then uh, I just have some random leaf here that's growing. I do not know what kind of etcheberry that is yet. And right down there is actually a string of pillows that propagated from leaf. So that's all my succulents that are growing outdoors that I've shared with you guys. I hope you enjoyed part two of our succulent garden tour of, of my succulents growing outdoors. And here is another look of everyone. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please See you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.